Welcome to Kids Town. My name is Becky. I am the Children's Ministry Director at Covenant Community Church in Vacaville, California. And I want to remind you that we have been learning what is God like? And we're going to be learning truths about God over the next couple of weeks. And we will be looking at the Bible to find out what those truths are. So remember what we've learned so far. We have learned that God is the Alpha and Omega, which means He is the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And then we learned that God is compassionate, which means He shows deep concern for His people and a desire to meet their needs. So this week is probably going to be the easiest truth about God that we learn. And the truth that we learn this week is that God is good. God is good. So first, I want to think about, let's make a list of things that are good. What kind of things, if I say, what are all the things that are good? What do you come up with? Maybe water slides, movies, kittens, pizza, cookies, hugs. All these things are good things. Um, maybe getting a present, that's a good thing. A new baby, that's a good thing. So there's so many different things in our world that are good that we could add to this list. And I'm sure you've come up with some that I haven't even said. Well, what's the opposite of good? Yes, it's bad. The opposite of good is bad. So what are some things that are bad? Bullies, lying, hunger. What else is bad? Maybe pain, hatred, things like that. Those are bad, right? Well, so our memory verse this week, let's read it together. It says, why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one is good except God alone. Wait, so no one is good but God? Actually, when Jesus was saying this, he was acknowledging that God is good. And he and the Father are one. So because he is good, God is good. Does that make sense? So I want to tell you a story from the Bible that explains this, kind of gives an example of how God is good. It's the story of Joseph, and it is from the book of Genesis, which is the first book of the Bible. So here's how it goes. First, there was this kid named Joseph, and his father was Jacob, and Jacob had 12 sons in all. And Joseph was a smart boy, and he was his father's favorite. And Joseph would sit with his dad and listen and learn, and he would take in everything that Jacob, his father, told him. Now, Joseph's 10 older brothers weren't like him at all. They didn't listen to their father. They were clumsy, they were careless, and they did not like Joseph. Well, Joseph had two dreams and he told his brothers about them and he said that his dreams meant that one day Joseph would rule over his brothers and they would all bow down to him. Well, his brothers did not like this. And you know, to make matters worse, Jacob gave Joseph a new beautiful coat. It had long sleeves and it had many stripes of bright colors on it. Joseph's brothers were so, so jealous. They plotted to kill Joseph. But instead, they just threw him in a pit and then they sold him to slave traders. And then they lied to their father and said he was killed by wild animals. Who does that? Poor Joseph. Well, 
Joseph was then bought by a man named Potiphar. And Potiphar was a rich, important man. Joseph did his work well. Everyone liked him except Potiphar's wife. So she told lies about Joseph and had him thrown into jail. Well, Joseph had a wonderful talent. He could tell people what their dreams meant. And the other prisoners would come to Joseph and tell him their dreams and he would tell them what their dreams meant. And he was always right. He became famous and eventually Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, heard about Joseph. Well, one day Pharaoh had a dream and he asked Joseph what it meant. Joseph told the Pharaoh that in Egypt, the next seven years would be just plentiful, great harvest, wonderful things were going to happen. But then in the next seven years after that, they were going to have a famine, which means they weren't going to have food to eat. So Pharaoh decided to make Joseph the second in charge in Egypt. And he said, Joseph, you organize this so that we have food in the seven years of famine. So that's what Joseph did. He made sure that they saved enough food for the seven years of plenty, that in the seven years of famine, they would be okay. Well, eventually Joseph's brothers came to Egypt to buy food and they didn't recognize Joseph. They did not recognize their brother. Joseph sold them food and then he asked about his father and he finally told them who he was. And then he said, I forgive you. Here's from Genesis chapter 50, verse 19 and 20. This is what it says. Joseph said, don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? You intended me harm, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. And then Joseph's family moved to Egypt. So God is good. God had a plan for Joseph. All that Joseph went through was God's plan. This story of Joseph should remind us that God is good because God is always right. Everything he does is good. God alone is morally excellent, virtuous, and righteous. So our craft this week is really fun. We're going to make a God is good hanging. And because it's the 4th of July, I figured why not make it look like a flag, an American flag, right? Because God is good. So let's go over to my craft table so we can see what we're doing. So what you're going to start with is some popsicle sticks and these are called these are the jumbo craft sticks and I have five of them here and I've put some cut sticks on the back to hold it all together so this is the first thing we're gonna do you've got your five jumbo sticks you're going to need red paint and white paint and then you're gonna paint like the flag it goes red white red, white, red. So do that step. Then you need three halves of the jumbo sticks. These three you're going to paint blue. You can use any type of paint or you can do markers. You can color them with markers if that is what you have at home. So once you have painted this, painted these, you're going to glue these sticks, these blue sticks, onto the top of these three. So you're gonna end up with something like that. So you've got your red, white, red, white, red, white, and then you glue your three blue stick halves on. 
okay? I have glued a ribbon to the back of mine so that I can hang it. Then what you can do here, this is where the stars go on our flag. And I have glued white buttons on mine. You can glue buttons on yours. You can draw stars. You can just do little dots of white paint. You can cut little stars out of white paper and glue those on. However you wanna do your stars is fine. The final step is to write on here, God is good. I'm just gonna use a Sharpie marker and I'm gonna write on one of my white stripes. You can write on whatever you want, whichever stripes you want. You just wanna make sure that your paint is dry. And there you have it. There is your God is good hanging. It's both patriotic and helping us remember this week's truth about God. Now that we've finished our craft, let's pray. Dear God, you are so good. Thank you for always having our best interests. Thank you for always looking out for us. Thank you for being good. We love you, God. Amen. All right, everyone. I'll see you next week.